Hey everyone, this is Nanagon coming at you with another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up a MySQL database and use it in your fat free project. This isn't terribly difficult, but some helpful hints might get you up and running a little bit quicker. So obviously, before we do anything, you need to have MySQL, SQL, or MariaDB installed. Well, let's make a couple notes of here of things that are important. So obviously, install MariaDB, MySQL. So you would do something like this if you're on Ubuntu. You would do like sudo apt get install MariaDB, MariaDB server. And the same would be MySQL or MySQL hyphen server. So then once you do that, you have to make sure you have the PDO extension installed. So this would be apt get install php pdo um, php mysql and in some cases you might need this guy so mysql nd is the native driver it's the most recent uh, driver that's used in php to communicate with a mysql database it is much more friendly we'll call it uh, with how to interact with things and it has some cool benefits as well so just plan on trying to install those things and once you get them installed then um, it's also probably helpful for us to get something where we can view our database outside of CLI because CLI sometimes is a little cumbersome. Um, I use a tool all the time called Adminner. So I'll just put a little URL in here, adminner.org. I know there's PHP my admin and I've used that a lot. I just find that Adminner is much simpler and everything loads faster. It's not quite as heavy. Um, just had more positive experiences with Adminner. So uh, to get Adminner, it's really simple. So I'll just get it from uh, their website, and I've typed this so many times, I just know what to do. It's a single file. So Adminner.org, that's the latest, MySQL. Adminner will also do SQLite and PostgreSQL and all that fun stuff. So now I have it, I'm just going to like move this latest into my public folder adminner.php <clears throat> and now we have an interface to view our stuff or view our database and uh, so here we go we're also going to need to create a database and we're going to need to create a user that will interact with that database so if you just installed uh, MariaDB or MySQL uh, you can use this command and it should just hop you in there uh, so now I have this, so I can do create database fat free tutorial. Now it's created it, and now I need to create a user for it. Uh, there is a shortcut, so you don't have to do like create user add blah blah blah. You can just do grant all privileges, and it doesn't have to be in caps, but I like to. Wow, it's been a long day, guys. See, on uh, that free tutorial uh, star two, we're going to name our user at free user at localhost since that's what we're doing. Identified by and here's our password uh, testing one, two, three. You obviously would want to do a much more in depth, random, unique password for this user and honestly you probably name the user something a little more creative than fat free user but for now for just this we're going to be going with this so now we've created our user we flush our privileges and we're done so now let's see what we're going to do is we're going to start up our local web server 8000 public now we're running so we'll hop over whoa hop over here so our fat free is running, we have hello world, but I'm interested in this guy, fat free user and testing one, two, three. Is that what I named it? Testing one, two, three. Okay. Login. So I now have this brand new empty database with nothing in it. And we're going to just do something simple. We'll call this one car parts. And we have an ID column, and it's auto-incrementing, and the name of the car part. 
just something really, really simple, something really basic, nothing too complicated here. So we'll come back to our code now. And now that we have the database that's running, it's creating a table, or we created a table for it, now we need to do something with it. So we need to set up a database connection. So we will come here to the documentation. This gives us a really simple, quick example of how to do it. So here we go. We're just going to copy this. And I like letting my equal signs breathe a little bit. Uh, so here we have this port 3306 db name. I just named it fat free tutorial. There is one other thing we can add in here. Char set equals utf8. And when you set this, it will automatically do that, that I guess pre-query if you want to call it that, for set names utf8. If you set the char set right there, it will automatically do that. Fat free user. And testing, one, two, three. There is also a fourth parameter where you can pass values to the PDO instance. So dbsql, this guy right here, it will, it kind of implement, it doesn't totally implement it or extend PDO, but it does override a bunch of its functionality. And if that thing doesn't exist, then it will uh, run the command against the PDO instance. So setting a couple parameters here, things that I like to do. So we have adder, let's see, what was this called? Emulate prepares, false. So when you're using the MySQL native driver, it's good to set this to false because it allows the native driver to em do the emulates for you. There is a little performance hit when you do this, but there's a, there's a few more benefits that you can research on your own on why you do this. We also have, this one's my favorite, stringify fetches. So when you pull something out of the database, if it's actually an integer, when you set this to false, it will show up in your code as an integer. So it's not everything is a string. This just comes in handy when you're like doing type checking on things from the database to make sure it is what you would hope it is. Uh, there's also another one in here that we could add in here. Um, error mode and you could set it to always throw on an exception but I think that's overkill for right now so now we have our database connection right here and we can very easily just attach this into pad 3 we can do set we'll call this DB is DB and that's it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this route here and we'll call this one car parts and actually we're going to pull this into a controller so let's create a new controller controllers and in here we're going to create a new file called car parts controller and then we don't want to forget that over here we have auto load controllers so this guy really quickly class car parts controller so we'll call this one index and things Let's see array arms <clears throat> all right here we have some basic stuff. Uh, don't really have anything to pull out of it quite yet, so I'm gonna worry about this in a, just a second. We're gonna do an insert. So we'll come back here. And now that we have this, I'm actually going to do car parts controller index something really similar with the guy below it. Now you normally wouldn't do something like this, but this is just for illustrative purposes. So this we're going to do insert and then a parameter of car part name. 
So we'll save this puppy. We'll come here. So now we have car part name equals args car part name. And I'm leaving it as a get just for simplicity because usually when you like write to a database, you want to do it as a post. So what we're going to do is framework get database and there's a function called exec that basically does everything. It does selects, it does inserts, it does all those fun things. So insert into car parts. I like using this. You can use the thing where it's like uh, name and then values and then you could do this. And this question mark, for those of you that don't know this, this is a prepared statement. Please, for the love of all that is good in the world, please use prepared statements in your SQL. Do not, I repeat, do not do things like this. Please don't do that. That is right for SQL injection, and I'm going to create a follow-up video on why that's not as smart as one would like it to be. So, we're going to do this. Um, I will show you the alternative syntax that I, I just like using because it looks really similar to the update syntax. I just do this. Set name equals this. Uh, and then what you do, because it's a prepared statement, is you actually pass the, you fill in the question marks in order. So the first question mark goes with this guy and it will just pass it in there for us. So now we have this. And we will redirect the route to car parts. And that's it. That's all we're going to do. Something, nothing too crazy. Now in car parts, we need to display it. So we'll just do something really super basic. So, and remember, you can do the shortened syntax if you want to instead of typing get all the time. So here we have select star from car parts. We're just gonna select everything we can. And, what, and just to make this simple, I'm just going to var dump the whole thing. All right, so let's see if this puppy works. So I'll come over here, and I'll create a new one actually. So localhost, car parts, just nothing there. There's an array of nothing. So remember, we have insert and then the name of our car part. So we'll say engine, and I'm going to hit this, and it should redirect us back to car parts, and I should see engine in there. Aha. It helps if you're a smarty smart. I name this an integer, and it should not be an integer. So we're going to call this a air care, and 150 long. Let's try that again. Bink. So now here we are, we have one array, and in that array is ID is 1 and name is engine. If I come back here, ID is 1, name is engine. So if I do this again, insert muffler. Well, I guess I'll capitalize muffler. And now we have muffler. And then we're going to have gas tank. Let's see if we'll take a space. Hey, look, it took you, even took a space. So, I can pretty this up here as well. Now when we look at car parts, it's a little bit prettier and easier to see. So hopefully this was a, just a simple enough tutorial for you to get a database going, connect it with your app, and then start displaying some data. Obviously there would be a lot more things happening in here, but this is the basics of how this thing would work. Uh, if you're enjoying my videos, please, please, please don't forget to subscribe, even though it's almost cliche to ask for that at the end of that. At the end of the video, please subscribe. It helps motivate me to do more videos. Thanks so much.